going on, everybody? Welcome to another collaboration episode. This is Let's Talk Pucks here on Spitball and Sports, along with the final word on hockey. Uh, we got a lot to discuss here. I'm your host, Jim Berenger, alongside my co-host, John Restino. You, you know him. You love him. He's everywhere. He's on Spitball and Sports podcast. He does a lot of things. He's got his politics show, but we won't get into that now. He's got a wrestling show, but... Him and I love to do the hockey stuff with uh, Puckett, with, uh, with Bill uh, on Thursdays. I haven't been on the episode in a, in a little bit, but you guys killed it as always. But I figured another collaboration episode this week between all of us just be easier instead of doing three separate podcasts because there's really not a lot to talk about. <laughs> no, no, definitely. The spitball and uh, sports um, people were always are asking for you to come on. So this is perfect to do it this way so we can just – have my special NHL edition and and all that, and I can't wait for it to start. So this no, is no, yeah, and big shout out to John. Normally this is is on Let's Talk Sports fan page, uh, but unfortunately some technical difficulties mm-hmm. with Facebook, so we're stream live in here on Spitball and Sports, uh, on their fan page, which is John was really nice to to let me borrow for today and maybe the future runs of the, of the show. Uh, we'll put it as many places as possible. But first of all, I got to ask how your summer is going. Oh, you know, it's um, it, the dog days of summer were really hot. <laughs> Thankfully, today, 74, less humid, beautiful, windows open, feels like football and hockey. Um, other than that, Jim, it's been it, it's been a relaxing summer. So that's cool. Um, unusual. Usually there's a lot going on. It's been kind of relaxing and. I know you needed to relax because you were super busy there um, <laughs> in like June or whatever the hell it was. June, July, May, yeah. April, then it stopped. It doesn't stop. So this has been a nice little little break here. But uh, I guess we'll start off the top. Uh, obviously, the big news last week, Vladimir Tarasenko signs with the Ottawa Senators one year, uh, $5 million deal. Not surprising. Uh, there were other offers on the table as well. I know he wanted to come back to New York area, but he wanted to go back to where he placed he felt that could win. And you got to give a credit to Pierre Dorian for, you know, you move, you, you move out Alex to bring it. Who's a scorer, but you're able to bring in another guy on a one year deal, which is, you know, very reasonable. And it's got a lot of potential to it, especially if Tarasenko does well. Oh my God. Yeah. Stutzla and, uh, these who, who, I mean, it, it's an, it's a, Formidable top six. I mean, obviously they are. That arms race is really good. That with the Sabers, the Sens, and the Red Wings. I mean, that's a really. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um, I wanted to ask you something though, because this was a rumor I read somewhere, and I don't know if it was legitimate. Did the Hurricanes were they involved at all trying to bring him in? Yeah, the Hurricanes wanted to bring him in. I'm still not sold on what the offer was. I think it was a couple years at like five something. I'm not sold that uh, the owner wanted to pay him over $5 million. We saw that with D'Angelo last summer. That's why D'Angelo went to Philadelphia. And then he was uh, put on waivers by Philadelphia and then only signed like a $1.6 million deal in Carolina. I think that was a big reason Tom Dundon didn't want to, you know, pay that, that kind of money, even though there are offers out there. I, if, you know, that's a big reason why Dougie Hamilton didn't sign in uh, – in New Jersey is because they, they didn't want to pay him $9 million. Now we'll get to the, the guy that they did pay in a little bit, but I want to stay on Tarasenko, but I think Carolina, I think you, I think it was Carolina. I think New Jersey was there. I think the Rangers and I think Ottawa definitely were teams. But like I said, once the Brinkett got traded to Detroit, I think they needed to add another piece. That was that was the domino that was going to go. I figured that 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 was the replacement. Yeah, I mean, it, what a great great replacement it is. I, I you know I'm just thinking of Brady Kachuk. I've been dying to see, as much as I'm a Leaf fan and don't really like Ottawa, but I'm dying to see him get in the playoffs. I want to see what he's going to be like, considering what I saw out of his brother. Um, I, like I said just a minute ago, I am really cannot wait to watch those three teams battle it out because I can't tell which one's better right now of the three. But this is really a, a big move. I mean, it's a huge move. I mean, Ottawa legitimately, and I think, I, I think, to, let's be honest. I think a big reason why Tarasenko 
is going to run top power play in Ottawa, right? He's going to run the power play. How much power play time was he going to get in Carolina with all those big dogs that were there? You know, was he's going to legitimately play in the top six. He's going to play alongside Giroux. Maybe he gets up and plays with Kachuk and Stutzel at, at times. You got Batherson. You got Norris is coming back healthy. They got a lot of nice pieces in Ottawa. I mean, you've got Corpus Allo. This is Ottawa's year to make the playoffs. They cannot afford not to make the playoffs. Yeah, no, this is their year. It, it, and and it, that's what's great about this. The three teams, it feels like it's all their year. And we don't know. <laughs> Ottawa's really making – I mean, and then you're going to have a, such a motivated Tarasenko. I mean, financial motivation. One year – I mean, he's going to get paid if he yeah. does anything over there, you know, from some team. may not be Ottawa, but it'll be somebody. And, um, ah, man, great moves. All three of the teams that were that I just mentioned are, are doing well. Sabres need a goalie, but whatever. I, I still think the Sabres need a goalie. I'm not – look, as much as I love Devin Levi and Uka Pekka I still think they need a veteran guy in there. I mean, their defense is improved, but it's not improved to the point like it is in Vegas – where you could throw an Aiden Hill or a guy like that in there just to get that. T- they need they need a good start. Ottawa needs a good start. Detroit needs a good start. I think, you know, Billy Husso needs to play better. You know, Eisenman's got the goal scorer, the winger, the, the goal scorer needs to go alongside Dylan Larkin. You know, the Atlantic division for the first time, I want to say in several years now, is really wide open. We won't know. I think it'll come down this year. It'll come down to the end of the year when we'll know who the, those matchups are. It's not going to be like it was the last couple of years where we knew Toronto and, and Tampa were playing in November. Like that's not happening this year. It I, legitimately, you could put Toronto in, and then the rest of the spots to me are wide open. I mean, I never, I know you never can discount. Um, Tampa because they're finally rested, they're healthy and all that. But they may have had a lot of changes. Boston has a lot of changes. You know, those up and coming teams are going to want a spot. Florida's banged up. It's open to those three teams to make a move. Yeah, it really is. It's a it's a it's a scary thought if you're one of those teams that were a perennial, including the Leafs. Um, you know, it's nothing. I they should be the one that definitely makes it. But look. They got their issues too when you think about goaltending and all that. So I mean, you know, it's gonna be fun. I I can't wait, man. The Atlantic is wide open. The only team who who in the Atlantic isn't? They're all pretty much. I mean, Montreal is probably them. the only yeah. team, but they're not gonna. But they're gonna be a hard out. I mean, it, it's not gonna be no gimme points against Canadians this year. Alex Newhook, you got Doc, yeah. you got Suzuki, you got Caulfield. Teams is gonna be a little healthier. Montembeau. You know, that team's – that's not an easy out. Martin St. Louis is a good coach, man. That team is not going to be easy to play against. No, it's going to be going to be great, man. I love it. I mean, and like we say, we stay in the Atlantic, right? But And then again, you know, Pierre Dorian made noise last year. He makes noise again this year. Again, he's taking a shot because he knows this team is ready to win, especially defensively. You have Chikrin on the back end, Shabbat. You know, yeah. Martin Zub's going to be healthy. If the injury bug does not hit the Ottawa Senators like it did last year, this team should legitimately be in the playoffs. They should, yeah, and be ready and could possibly make some noise in it. Um, because I, I'll tell you, man, you get you get a Kachuk. I, I'm sold. I am sold on the kid on the Kachuk family. I, you get him in there, who knows that Brady's going to have the same thing. He, you know, he is. And and I, they're a scary team, man. They're not going to be so too, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, they're going to be tough. This is this is the battle of Ontario again, and maybe we'll see it in the playoffs. You never know. We could see battle of Ontario. You never know. I mean, look, it this is the summer where you know you can throw projections and predictions out the window, but it's fun because those three teams are coming along at such a nice pace, and obviously we can't you know discount what's in the other division in the Eastern Conference either. But still, I mean, Buffalo. Uh, Ottawa, Detroit, they're making their move. And it sound, it feels, again, and you throw New Jersey in the mix, Carolina's, it's like the late 90s, early 2000s again. And the Leafs are right there too. I mean, this is a good thing. It's I will always stress this. It is a good thing when the original six franchises are doing well for the league. 
uh, Toronto, the Rangers, Chicago. Like Chicago, yeah, they'll be a bad team. But guess what? All eyes will be on Chicago this year because Bedard and what they did. Uh, and that's good for the league. You want the original six teams to do well. Yeah, you definitely do. And you're right. I mean, we're going back to the early 2000s. This is going to be because the Devils, I mean, we were just, I know we're got a little off track, but you'll go to that. That's right. To the Metro, man, the Devils, the the Rangers. I mean, I, I you know, I, I got my thing about Pittsburgh. I don't think, I honestly, I, I could see them out of the playoffs. Right. I, it wouldn't shock me, but it's, it is setting up to be a better Eastern Conference for sure. I mean, this is going to – it's better than last year. It's oh, be absolutely. Worse Way better. Yeah. Way better than last year. So it's it's going to be good, man. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. Uh, obviously, we have to stay in the uh, Atlantic Division for more talk. Uh, we'll go to your friends, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Ilya Samson, Steel. $3.55 million on a one-year. It's a good deal. Nice deal. Came right in the middle between what the player and the team wanted. Had a feeling that was going to happen. I mean, you asked me a million times about yeah. what the contract was going to be, and I kind of hit it right on the money yeah. with that one. Uh, if I had the sound bite, I would play it. Scott Hall, RIP, one more for the yeah. good guys. Uh, and then I, I told you again, Matt Murray, he was either going to go buy out or it was going to be ltir Go Robita Island, and Robita Island it is. He's got a uh, – we got a new member. Yeah, we do. And, you know, it sad. I talked about it on with Puckett, with Bill. You know, what a – what's he, 29? That's it. That's all Murray is, I think, 29, yeah. maybe 30. He played well last year at times. There was a whole couple – a month and a half where he was good, and it looked like it could have been his net, right? And then he gets hit in the head. And it was a, it was a tough hit. I guess for him – Robot Island might be perfect. Yes. It gives him a year off. It gives him some time to, and let's see, does he come back or does he just retire? I mean, but if he could come back, maybe he gives it a shot after a year of nothing and he gets paid. Oh. So that's good for him. And hopefully his head and, and I think it's the concussion. I think that's what their, mm -hmm. the, the physical part of it is. Uh, you got to hope for him that it, you know, he can come back from this. But again, we saw that with Rick there, man, too many shots to the head can end a guy's career and it's unfortunate look you know you we, we make jokes of it but it does it makes sense for the Leafs this year for Roberta Island and then obviously you have Muzz in there as well well he won't be on the island he'll just be on LTIR yeah. but um because they're not making him go away they really want Jake Muzzin back like he was mm -hmm. an integral part of their defense yeah. he's a huge deal um but that's their cap relief no buyouts no second buyout for anybody um so look you know, Matt Murray, look, what can you say about Murray it is like when he was with Pittsburgh, yeah, he won those two cups, but don't forget Mark Andre Fleury was there. It was a different team. Like even during the playoff runs, they split time. He was injured. He came back like Fleury had to win him some series, especially against Washington a couple of years. And he, it was Fleury's net until Murray came back and look, he was a great goalie, but once he lost that safety net, he wasn't the same player. And I know the injury bug and everything caught up with him. And you look, you thought maybe the fresh start in Ottawa, but he just can't couldn't get away from the injuries. No, he couldn't. And this year was kind of, you know, I I felt, you know, he reunites with Dubis from Sault Ste. Marie, but also his father, the situation with him, where his, his dad passes away, but they, his dad was a big Leafs fan. That whole story. It was yeah. going to be a nice reunion. He comes back to Toronto and he was playing well. And that, how could you not root for this? And uh, you know, it, it just sadly it, it ended in in what how it always does for him. But uh, I'm just, you know, in these situations, Robot Island, like you said, this is a, this isn't like Louisville. This isn't like all that. This one is probably the, you know, this is the right kind of uh, Robot Island. Yeah, because salary cap relief. Look, if they had bought him out, then you're looking at two years of cap money. Probably next year would have been bad for the Leafs. And you know, I know the cap's going up, but you still got to pay yeah. Matthews. You still got to pay Nylander. And you know, look. Everybody wants to talk about what Nylander should get, and we'll get to that in a minute. What are your thoughts of the Samson off deal? Good deal? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you told me it a thousand times. I asked you every show we sat in, <laughs> and um, it's perfect. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you – it's kind of like you see – I guess Swayman's got a similar thing going on. Yeah, he's uh, – he's they, they've got uh, – so Swayman's arbitration is actually today. Hmm. So we're waiting on when it comes in. Like, it still has not come in yet. So we're still waiting on what uh what the number is for Swayman. 
And we really don't know. I mean, look, we know that it's probably going to be a similar number to what Murray got. I'm uh, not Murray. Samson off got. Uh, it better not be what Murray got or else the Boston needs to make a lot more moves. But they still need to make a move. Look, the play, the team's looking for two. The player's looking for 4.8. That was similar to what the Leafs exactly. wanted with with um, Samson off. We settle at 3.5. Okay. Maybe you get it. Maybe Boston gets him under 3.5. This is why I agree with you and I both watched free agency show on J- July 1st. Yeah. I agree a thousand percent more and more with Marty Baron. What he said, he, I, st- I agree with him. I still don't know how nobody offer she did. Yeah. Swayman. I don't get it. I don't either. I don't, I don't either. Well, you said it, you know, it's, it's the unwritten rule. It's like a baseball rule. And yeah, um, yeah I don't get it. I don't get it either. They just they, won't I do mean, it. They could have put Boston in some serious trouble right now. Yeah. The Leafs could have died. Yes. I, I would have had no problem. I would have loved to have seen it, but it don't happen. <laughs> It don't happen. And don't look, happen. I think, I think, you know, uh, I think those, I think Boston with the, with the two guys that they have going today, uh, I think Frederick's later in the week where he, you know, the yeah. team is looking for with Frederick, they're looking at, um, they, they want two times 1.4 player wants 2.9. Let's call it two and we'll, and we'll move on. Maybe 1.9 call it a day and we move on. Like, I think that's where I, I think that's where we're looking I like Frederick. I've interviewed the guy several times. He's a good dude. He's a good, hardworking player. I'll never forget uh, Boston's tour up in Vermont. I was talking with him. You know, he he's really, really improved since his rookie season, since he got drafted. I know everybody talks about that that draft and everything, but he's really putting the work. Um, you know, we'll see what he gets out of it and what Boston can get give him because he's, he's an integral part of that team. Uh, and same with Swayman. I mean, maybe they could could have traded one goalie. And now you're looking back, now that you didn't get Bertuzzi, maybe they could have kept Hall too. But again, the salary cap is just wreaking havoc on everybody. And it's it's catching up the, the, with the Bruins. And we even haven't even touched on the big story of the Boston Bruins. Right. No, I know. it is. It, it, someday in the future, whenever the CBA ends, I really hope that there is some kind of meeting to where they figure out all they got to do is look at the NBA – and take a little bar, little part of them and bring it over to the NHL. You give me that, you give every team one guy that they developed and it doesn't count against the cap, that bird rights type stuff. Yeah. Like they have in the NBA. I'll tell you, and it would be, you wouldn't, you know, it would be perfect. Well, you know, know who, you, all right. So let, let's just say, you know, let's take the two, like let, we were talking about Toronto. Saying, you know, Matthews would have been the guy in Toronto yeah. and Pasternak's the guy in. Or McAvoy, pick one of those two guys. And now you go on. Now you move on. Because everybody complains come the playoffs that the sa- everybody goes over to salary cap. There should be a salary cap, cap in the playoffs. No, it be. It's for the regular season. Playoffs are playoffs. It's completely different. Your team just doesn't execute. And and don't be mad at guys like um, Kelly McCrimmon and Julian yeah. Breezewa and other guys around the league that figure out how to operate the CBA and the salary cap better better than your team. Yeah, and and then sometimes it, it, it's just opportunity. Like right. you know, you get you get that shot. I mean, you got Kucherov, whoever is going to be out, and yeah, it works out great. I mean, it just it's and, and, and the best part about Kucherov thing was there's a half season. Okay, whatever. Right. And he was ready to go. Like he was ready to go. <laughs> like he was practicing. Ah, uh, but he's not ready to go physically. Okay, medical doctor. Hey, we got it. Can't go. Then he comes in. Does this thing. I mean, Patrick Kane did it. So many guys have done it. So many teams have done it. It's not against the rules. Like, that's the point. Yeah. And that's like a lot of people are very upset over Mur- about Murray and Robita Island. I mean, I I didn't even understand what the bit what the complaint was. There's I mean, no it was, complaint. There should be no complaint. It saves them the, look, it saves money for the Leafs this year, and it they don't have to spend any money on it next year because he's gone. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and and the one thing that is good about LTIR is there's no issue. I mean, I, I'm sure he had to be faced with okay, you're gonna here's eight million dollars basically, just you know it's eight million dollars to go away. That's it's yes. pretty much what it is. Yeah, sit out the season for us, eight million, because then next year, like I said, he he would have needed it anyways. He needs the year off. I don't know if he retires. He's too young. It feels like to retire. If there's any way that his, you know, the concussion syndrome isn't as you know 
somehow some I don't I I still feel horrible when I think about Murray because it could have worked out perfectly there and it was a nice story and you know, sometimes nice stories are nice to see finish but but they don't always spin. work out no, but they don't, don't always work out yeah, no and no. you saw it with Colorado too you're not going to be out the whole year because the injuries and stuff and they should have done that yeah. they should have put him on LTIR last year and they would have had their center problem solved at the trade deadline but they didn't do it um, and that's just a misstep yeah. on their team and I knew he wasn't coming back anyway so look you know, Leafs, they, they handled their business the right way. Uh, Boston's got their business that they're handling now. Maybe, hopefully, by the time we wrap this thing up, we'll, we'll hear about uh, Frederick and what's next. But as of right now, there's no um, update on what the contract is, what's been awarded. Uh, the hearing is today. So, But staying with the Boston Bruins, big news is Patrice Bergeron uh, retired from the National Hockey League, one of the best centers in the the league. Uh, You know, he's, uh, you know, Hall of Famer, member of Quadruple Cola Club, the whole nine yards. I mean, he's just one of the best centers ever to play the game. And I want to hear about this stuff, but he's overrated. Dude, this guy is a class individual and one of the best centers ever to play the game. Yeah, I, I saw the guy from Pittsburgh, Mark Madden. He was really something on Twitter. And I was, uh, you know, what's it, six Selkies, a cup, two golds, whatever he, he did. And he, I, I, how, there's nothing to say bad. I mean, there's nothing you can even, there's no argument. The guy is what he is. And he's a Hall of Famer whenever they put him in. I, I don't know how quickly that happens. but I, He's the first ballot him. Hall of Famer to me. I think he's the first ballot Hall of Famer to me. Yeah. I mean, 57.9%, almost 58% in the faceoff dot career i mean come on i get thousand games played over thousand points 20 points in the in the bruins run to to 2011 stanley cup you know they went to cup final 2013 2019 yeah they lost in heartbreaking fashion both those times you know but you know he's good captain good leader just a you know, again 2003 draft class i mean think about think about that draft class all these guys retiring and everything like just so many good players and just, you know, great stuff. And to me, Bergeron, one of those guys is just, you know, I want him on my team. I want him to be taking face-offs. He never, you know, this guy was a winner everywhere he went. Team Canada. Oh, didn't even mention the 2005 Team Canada team, how loaded that team was. And oh, by the way, it was Bergeron, Crosby, and Marshawn in 2016 for Team Canada at the World Cup of Hockey too. So this yeah. dude's done it all. And I don't under – look, big deal. He's got one cup. You know what? He's done a lot more for the game. Big deal. There's a lot of guys that have multiple cups and are not as good as Patrice Bergeron. Yeah, and and I know that one argument was stats and looking at stats and all that stuff. I I, I – I don't know, man. How could you not want him? If you're, if I want him every day, he wins. A, if if you, if I came and put him on the Maple Leafs, they don't go through that drought of, of losing for in the first round. No. Automatically, if no. I just throw him in the mix, they win. I know they do. You know, he, but yeah, he's not an overrated player. In, in fact, underrated. you can make the art. You can make the argument he's underrated. Yes, I kind of was making that argument a little bit on Twitter because through, you always you always overlook him. When you right. think of everybody and everything that's going on around him, he's not that guy. But then you watch, and it's 200 feet. He does it all. He does everything. And Stick he's definitely on the trophy Olympics. says it all, man. It's two, yeah. Two-way hockey. It's two-way hockey. The best defensive forward, best defensive center in the game. 19 years in the league. I mean, what can you more can you ask from the guy to do? I mean, guy played hurt through a playoff run. Maybe, again – the only thing I'll question the Bruins this year is you're up 3-1, then you bring them back. Like, I don't know if I would have done that. But then again, I you never know. I mean, look, you know what? Guys want to play. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I I just – the only thing I was talking um, to someone about was about is he – is it how quickly do they get him in? Like, is it is it is it real fast? Is it, I mean, I don't know. Because you watch people stall out, and we talked about the Hall of Fame and how – aggravating that gets when guys that aren't in there but i got to imagine he's he's done quickly so that's oh, good for him great year great yeah, guy and 37 great by the way 37 as i said in my little nightcap recap 37 is going up to the rafters is probably next year at some point we don't 
just don't know when, but 37 will go up at TD Garden. Uh, one of the best players ever to do it. I mean, class individual all the way, classy press conference. Just, yeah. you know, he knew it was time. The body said it was time. And, you know, but the thing about it is, is he looked at peace at the decision, right? Like some guys, you're not sure. Oh, maybe I'll come back. This No, this dude, he's done. He's not coming back. Forget it. That's why he took so much time because he wanted to make sure the urgent side was not reignited saying, oh, maybe I can do this. He's done. He Bergeron's done. Yeah, in 19 years, and you figure now he gets to an end. Good for him. Gets to spend it with family, kids, whatever he has going on. You know, it's 19 years. It's a long time. Almost 20 years of a lot being of body, away. Lot, bodies <laughs> been beat up, and plus the back injury come yeah. to playoffs. That's always tough to get through. Uh, he got a new kid on the way, so yeah. I mean, that's that's tough for him. I, and now, and and I gotta and I gotta wonder. I think it's either retirement or it's back to Czech Republic for David Krejci. I think those are the two options for, for Krejci. Yeah, I'll be interested. I'm waiting to hear from him. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about him. Uh, that's Yeah, I can't see him playing on anywhere else or even back with ball. Yeah, I no, just don't he's, see it. He's, he's, no, I don't see it either. I think it's, I think it's retirement or it's, it's public. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. So I don't know. It's going to be, a, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what, uh, what happens with, uh, with these teams. So, you know, Boston, Boston's got a lot of work to do. You got Pavel yeah. Zaka down the middle, Charlie Coyle. Do they go after Mark Shifley? Do they go after Elias Lindholm? Do they have the money to even do it after, you know, the, what Swayman and what uh, Frederick are going to get? It, it might, this might be a tough year for Boston. You knew they were going to take a step back anyway, but now, it's probably going to be even a little bit more of a step back. Yeah. Yeah, it has to. How do you lose Bergeron and not? Yeah, it's going to be a little bit, definitely. I mean, I, I'm sure, though, they'll be tough. They'll have no, you know, but you're right. It'll be a step back. I, I can't see how it isn't. And um, they need Swayman, though. I'm going to say, I think he's important, right? I mean, because Allmark, I, I just, I just think he's so important. You said it before. He's just very, very important to everything. I'd If he was gone, I'd really be concerned. Yes, I would be very concerned because then you don't have the elite goaltending that you had last year. The defense is still there. They still have a good team. They really do. They still have a good team. But, mm -hmm. again, you're, the leadership in the room, Bergeron, all that stuff, you know, Monty's going to be fine. You know, Bergeron will be talking to guys. But, again, he's just not going to be always there. Z's not there. But, again, it doesn't matter who the leader – That there's been a, there's been a culture built in that room. And I think Pasternak and uh, McAvoy and Marshawn will just carry it on. They'll be yeah. fine. But yeah, I think they're Mar Marshawn is going to, I think, really step up. I think he, I think he learned so much from Bergeron, right? Because remember how he was, and he kind of had, but it, everything he, he changed. I mean, there was a point where he's just a still a rat, but he was like a really big rat, you know, type of thing. It was, yeah. it, it almost had Michael Bunting feeling, and then it just changed, you know, and he's. He's like Bert. He's almost like a, a, a Bergeron type. At this, I never thought I'd say that about him, but yeah, no, he definitely is. And look, they're they're going to be a good team. But again, I think my prediction of what which it was last year is, you know, okay, who's taking the step back? I, Washington. We saw their age last year. The, the same questions about Bo Washington, Boston, and Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh and, and Boston are going to be bubble teams. But again. Can Boston get a top three seed because the way the, the Atlantic so, so wide open is possible. It, it theoretically can happen. I'm just not sure. I'm not right. sure. But again, they still have that defense. And if you know, get Swayman in on a reasonable number, then look out for the Bruins. Absolutely. So final topic of today revolves around Sebastian Ajo's new eight year deal. Uh, $9.75 million AAV, Carolina making moves, paying guys. They had to. I mean, just can't continue to have the recycling of a roster because your ownership doesn't want to pay. And he gets a nice deal. And it's a good deal for, for a guy. But, again, now he's got to start putting up the numbers of a guy that's getting close to $10 million because, again, he disappeared in the playoffs. Now, not having Svechnikov hurt, but still. Now he's yeah. got to put up those numbers. 
Yeah, and he, and I like him a lot, right? Center, two way. He's a good two way, two hundred foot player. He does it all. Mm -hmm. He's uh, yeah, yeah. Now he's got to prove it, but he was worth it. I would say he had it was worth the ever. It was worth it for him. I, I for them on the team he's on, and he's just a good two way center. He's very very good, and playoff time will prove, I guess, his worth. But I was uh, I wasn't surprised by the number. Were you at all? No. I, I kind of figured. That's what I was going to see. I, maybe I said nine and a half in my own head, but, you know. Yeah, I'm not surprised by the number. They they were getting close to a deal, and, and they figured it out. And, again, like I said, ownership had to pay. They just can't go through the recycling of guys get, not wanting to get their money. This guy's a homegrown talent. You want to keep a guy like Sebastian Ajo there. You got Sveshnikov, Kakaniemi, you know, Bunting's in there now. You know, they have some good players. So um, it's going to be, you know. Carolina's going to be a tough out. They brought their three-headed monster out. You know, let's see what they do this year. I mean, look, they've lost in the conference finals. They're 0-12 in the conference finals. You know, so they got to get past the next step. Yeah, and last year, we well, Florida did it to everyone. But, gosh, they were a couple bounces away from, you know, series would have been tied 2-2 or whatever you want to say. And 1-1, one, one, up one nothing. could have swept, could have been swept the other way. I mean – you don't know how things would have played out, you know, if they get a bounce here or there. I mean, again, you, you go back to it. Any team that loses long over times usually doesn't win a series. But the way Carolina bounced back, they were in every game. Yeah, great coaching. Love Br Brenda Moore. So it's – they're going to be difficult this year. You know, they could win that, you know, the Metro. I think just the biggest thing is that they just couldn't score goals. Yeah. And, you know, Ajo was stymied and – you know, you're not having stretch and cough, but, you know, Pacioretty's hurt, too, and this team is just different. But you still have Fosk, you got Jarvis, you got Bunting, you know, Martinook's still there, Natchez. This team's still formidable. I mean, and on the back end, Burns, you got Orloff there. This team's going to be yeah, – Carolina's well, right there. Top, the New Jersey, Carolina, top of the Metro, Yeah, as always. The big question is, is everybody's like, all right, well, what does this mean for William Nylander? Well – doesn't mean anything for William Nylander because he's again going to point to Mitch Marner and say, yo, he got 11 five. This is where it's what an impasse this team is at. And uh, boy, I don't know what to say because he's not for me. He's not above. The, uh, I don't, I'm not putting him over that uh, Aho number. I mean, I mean, if it was me and it could happen, that's what I want Nylander at. I want him there. I want him right there. I think the Leafs want him there too. I believe. I think they want him with definitely something starting with the number nine. Um, but oh yeah, they want at least between nine and nine five. That's what they want. I, I don't think that. I don't know what they're going to do. I, I honestly, I'm kind of surprised still that nothing has happened. Like I've heard not. I mean, really, it's dead silent on Matthews and Nylander. Well, it's that time of year. Yeah, but everyone's. I, I thought for sure, but I know that. Here is the big, and they, they try, and they know their culture is bad. They know it, and, and even Dubas knew it. That's why it's bringing in Felino. Everybody's coming. Everyone's coming to try to fix everything. Or O'Reilly, or, or when you hear Nylander say, I need to know what Matthews is doing before I do anything, that's tough, man. That's that's money. That's not winning, and that's that's concerning. For, yeah, for you want to be you want to be a winner. It shouldn't be about what the other guy's getting. It should be, okay, this is what I'm getting. This is how I'm going to help the team. But again, we've seen, we saw him in his first contract. We've talked about this before. He doesn't have a problem sitting out. Him and his dad, yeah. <laughs> yeah they don't but Trey, but Trey Living, Trey Living's taking a hard line. Finally, he's like, dude, you're not getting over ten million dollars. Straight up, it's not happening. Yeah, you can't. You had, to, and it's too bad. You know, it's uh, some people say, well, you know, it's a little too little, too late. But really, it's not. It's his first year. You have to do it. Yeah, you, you have to play to hardball. You have to play yeah. hardball. I don't know where else you'd go with this because next year, what the hell's Marner going to, I mean, if he has another hundred point season, my God, he's going to, he'll point right to Matthews, let yeah, alone. Point, well, yeah. I mean, think about that. Matthews. I mean, I think he's, it was Marner get more than dry saddle right now. Oh, I think, I think so. I think he does. It's awfully close. I think he does though. Yeah. I mean, but you think about it, right? You look at Toronto, you look at Edmonton, right? You look at all these guys, dry saddles coming up soon. McDavid is going to get more than Matthews. Dry saddle is going to want money. I mean, look, it's it's crazy. Luckily, the salary cap's going up, but still, I mean, you can't man, do it. Oh man, a lot of lot of tough decisions to make because the because man, Edmonton's in a bind. 
you know, the goaltending is still – I know everybody points to Stuart Skinner, but he didn't – I'm not sold on the playoffs, man. Defensively, that team doesn't have a number one defenseman. That's good enough. And, and the Maple Leafs just can't get their scoring in the playoffs. Yeah, it makes no sense. And their defense needs help. I don't know where because I look at that. I think their forwards are better than last year. Their defense is a little bit concerning when you see Giordano and Timmons being number seven. Something has to happen there. There's no way. I mean, there's no way. Unless they, unless Connor Timmons is something that I don't know anything about. He missed a lot of time. But, I mean, they, they got to get a defenseman in there. That's why it's – I don't know. Yeah, I, You know, the, the ultimate thing would be you trade Nylander, you get a defenseman. It's not going to happen, though. That's fantasy sports. And I just don't know. I, their defense is very concerning. It, it it's is. Concer- it, very concerning. It's very concerning. It's very concerning. And their bottom six is not what it was. So – Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, it's got, like I said, Atlantic division, we go back to it full circle from the beginning of the show. Atlantic division is going to be wide open this year. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And I'm uh God, we're getting close. I can't wait. I, I really, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope the Leafs, you know what? I can't take much more, you know, how much more disappointment can one person take? Well, they've been given <laughs> a lot of disappointment for a long time, for a lot of years. So yeah, I know. Your Devils, man, gave me enough disappointment through the years. Yeah, that's right. They're, look out for that team this year. Oh, my God. They're the best team in the East. We've said this a million times. Right now on paper, as we stand, I think they're the, they are. They got to be. Even they, without a goal. You just got to live up to expect. Look, the expectations are now that you got to make the playoffs and you got to follow up what you did last year. You have to. It can't be. There's no There's no step back this year. It's playoffs or bust. It, that's and what it step- is. And you got to win. You got to win around too. And you said it on your thing that um, on one of your posts, uh, maybe on Twitter, I mean, it's a, de- or I think it was full press hockey. It's a destination. Mm-hmm. Why not? Now you want to come. You c- Guys want to come. Mm-hmm. Guys want to come now. I mean, think about it. No six said he wants to win. New Jersey was on his list. Glad he got it done. Miller would, when he was surprised, he got traded, heard it was New Jersey. Great. All right, great. I know I'm, I'm going to a winner. Like guys want to stunk. They're, they're in conversations about Matt Dumba. Now, again, see if they can make it work they're still in about a goaltender can they you know figure some things out here and there they still got some cap, salary cap space but again look i'll tell you this as we you know wrap this up do not be surprised some of the guys that are still out there maybe dumba is not one of those guys but a guy like tatar takes a pto somewhere because we're getting close to that time yeah. we're getting close to that time where guys are going to start taking ptos because you gotta squeeze every dollar out in this cap yeah, the Leafs better be looking at Dumba if they can. I don't know if they can. Uh, but, yeah, Tatar, I mean, I was looking at that list of what's left. I, I Man, geez. You get Tatar for a million dollars. That's a great – that's a good It's a good that's time. A good it's a good that's a great deal, yeah. My guy Comtois is still out there. There's still some guys that I would love to, you know, if you, your own favorite team would like to have them. Phil wants yeah. to play still. Kessel, he's still looking. Yeah, Kessel wants to – you know, Kessel may get a PTO someplace. I don't know. I mean – so it's going to be very, very interesting in the dog days of uh, the offseason. We're waiting for arbitration hearings, obviously. Uh, we're waiting for numbers to come in. I know Jake McBain just you know, got his yeah. new deal before the, the, uh, they went to arbitration, but still nothing on uh, Frederick or Swayman. So we'll see what happens. Probably news will come out later or tomorrow, but, you know, it's the dog days of the NHL offseason. Yeah. Yeah, it is, man. We're getting there, though. It's almost unbelievably almost already August, so we're close. Closing in. <laughs> Closing in, getting close to another season. But, everybody, thanks for tuning in, watching us here on Spitball and Sports via Let's Talk Pucks, Let's Talk Sports fan page. Uh, the final word on hockey as well. I've been your host, Jim Berenger, alongside my co-host, John Restino. Guys, check it out. We'll find it later on. We'll post it in all the groups as well, on Twitter as well. Guys, I hope you enjoy the show and enjoy the rest of your offseason. If anything big comes in, you know we'll be here. Take it easy, everybody. Take care.